Okay, so the, this week uh, it, it's chapter 11, and um, we see that uh, we have some uh, uh, interesting information about uh, how to, this is the case when you make more, more um, uh, <clears throat> models and you want to compare the result of these models. So let, let's, let's grab the, the book so we can uh, uh, see what he says. Maybe share some, some, uh, some experience. So, <clears throat> so this is, um, um, is when we are interested in within uh, model uh, or between model comparisons. So this is, the, so let's say, the first step to uh, screening many models. So because here uh, they make more more than one recipe in one uh, workflow and then mm, adding a full term model no you know uh, so just some, my first question is does any one of you know about um uh, because <clears throat> i make the recipe here so i have tidy models study model prefer i uh, set up the the, the recipe and uh, uh, then what it does uh, is uh, arranging different uh, receipts. So like this is uh, um, uh, additive model. And then uh, the second recipe is with uh, interaction terms. And the third is with um, splines. And then uh, he put them all together in one uh, list of receipts, re recipes. So my, my question is, when after I've made a workflow set this time, because it's, it's not just a workflow, it's a workflow set, because it's a set of workflows. I have one more than one receipt. Uh, and uh, more than one, so different recipe make different models. So I have as well a list of models, but this is, um, I use just one linear model, which grabs the, the different, the various recipe here and have been uh, set, but, this cross false for false, for example, is not um, something that I didn't uh, get into it very much. So, the the yeah, isn't the tree proc the list of models? Uh, this is the um, uh, list of uh, receipt. recipes. Recipes, okay, and then recipes. And then... Sorry about it. yeah. I know what you're saying. I appreciate you trying so hard too in English. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can't speak Italian. Yeah. That's for damn sure. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. This is the list of uh, recipes. Oh, I see. It's there. It's the first thing of the workflow set. I missed it. I'm sorry. But what is the list LM equals LM model? Um. Okay, because then in a workflow set, you can add more models. You can have a list of different models. Uh, maybe that's the reason because of cross false or cross through, because then if you have more than one model, they will cross uh, different recipes. Uh, I'm, now I'm stuck with this pronunciation. That, anyway. Um, so from this, uh, what I've done is just start doing the same thing, but then uh, without following the seeds, 
So I've just made a new, the same model, but with different seed, with a different seed. You know, when you split the, when you split the model within training and testing set, you use the set seed function. Yeah, I've tried replicating this thing without, uh, so with a different uh, seed. Yeah. And so, fa so found a different result, quite diff um, well, quite high uh, difference. So yeah, that was something they brought up in the last chapter. I remember saying that like uh, picking a seed can make a huge difference. Yeah. But wasn't one of the methods to do that was to like, was, that's what resampling was for? Because you got a different, um, you got a different collection of uh, of lines from your main data set, rows of data that you use to do training and testing every time. Mm -hmm. And so the more you did that, the less chance, if you summarized over that, the less chance you have of having like some weird spurious data pull. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, um, because the, the 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 notes were different from from the the, the chapter. They started from from like um, a certain point, and then uh, while while the book uh, did all the the passages. So, um, what 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 they want is to. Uh, like um, evaluate the the metrics, the result of the metrics. So um, after the workflow set, they they do a workflow map, and and this is um, this is a function that takes an initial argument. And uh, then you, inside put the seed, you are resampling. So like the cross validation falls and then uh, the keep pred uh, argument, which said that you are saving predictions and uh, in the workflow result. So this is a bit hard to me to, to remember, even if th this is very uh, important, uh, you know, th this is what makes the, the, the model uh, engine start. So uh, here, he actually does the model, no? it does the fit of the model. But it's very difficult to me to, I won't say memorize, but uh, you know, I did a workflow set and now I map the workflow like the same as the function map, no? In, um, in R. I map the workflow <coughs> with this information. The resampling values and say that he has to keep the, the prediction result and the confidence intervals. When when we did a work just a workflow with one receipt and one model, we use the workflow and then we fit the workflow. Right. Now we do yeah. Now we do the workflow set, then we map the workflow. And this is the fit because it's a fit example. Examples. So if we see what is um, hmm. workflow set.
that function does uh, is generate a workflow object from pre-processing and model objects. So, And um, yeah. So in my, what is it? Uh, so basically what it does, basically fit the model. You see that does the basic and all the things. That's the same in the book. The only things that I have used the same seed here in the map, in the workflow map, but a different, but a different seed when I did the split. And this shown uh, a certain level of difference within the result of the model. And we'll see, for example, I collect metrics in this function and I use the workflow map select which one is the metric that I want, for example, the, the uh, RMC. And then this is the, 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 linear, the linear model part that ends here. Then he adds a random forest model. So let's, let's jump uh, directly to the thing that uh, the, the, the random forest uh, is fit with a workflow because there is just one re uh, recipe. And so it doesn't use it a workflow set and then a workflow map, but just a workflow. And then fit the examples. Instead of just fit the workflow, if he fit the samples because he resamples the, uh, the data set and then put all, everything together as a workflow set. So there is a random forest and the three linear models with the three uh, recipes. with us workflow set. This, um, ah, okay, I remember this. Because you can uh, assign a name to this thing. Inside this um, us workflow set, you may have more than one uh, uh, extra model, one model. So we see this um, in uh, screening many models. Uh, so you you assign a name to to this thing. So you assign the thing the this uh, um, RF res that would be the random forest result or resamplings. Uh, a name random forest, and you'll find the name here. So this is done, why, why this is done? This is done for, for you to check uh, different models with different reci recipes and see which one is the, the most appropriate. Instead of just resampling, um, as we, de we did last time, last week. Here we're sampling more models. So the workflow set uh, no, doesn't, doesn't show that much. It's interesting. So it's just a list of models or a table of models, mm -hmm. I guess. And you run your same data through mm -hmm. all the different models, and then you can more easily pull the metrics out and compare the models. Mm -mm. Yeah, in a standard way, right? That's the whole point. Mm -mm. 
And then you can see with this auto plot, and um, oh, this is just a text uh, added to the to the plot that the the random forest is here, and the other three uh, model, linear models with the recipes are down here. So. How many samples or were we, is this resampling? <laughs> it is, isn't it? So, uh, so that's why we have, that's why we have a, an error bar there, right? Because there's, there's a whole bunch of R squared that we're adding up and comparing between the different models. Mm -hmm. Where, where would the, iter the number of iterations? For the, for the uh, random forest model, it's a thousand trees. Yeah. Sorry, I, I've been trying to catch up to you. <laughs> one thing I one thing I dislike about these chapters is that like the code to get to where they're at <laughs> buried in chapters previously. So like you have to find all that stuff. That's why, yeah. I, I yeah, it, it, it's it's here. Uh, where is it? I, there, there you go. This is the fold, the um, cross validation. Okay, so ten ten fold cross validation. Yeah. Yeah, that's from the last time, right? Yeah, and this is the key thread, which uh, um, yeah. is made with this function. Cool. Control resamples, save pred prediction, and save workflow. So, so, in so instead of doing these predictions one at a time, we're mapping over the different models and pulling out the extracting the data, the sorry, the fit data in order to understand how well things worked. And mm -hmm. here we're seeing that a random forest model does better. But but doesn't that um, doesn't that go back to the to what they were saying last chapter about like the bias, what is it bias something trade off? I forget what the other word was. Do you know what I mean? The, yeah, you know, uh, bias variance. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, like, random isn't is, isn't random forest. I'm gonna get this wrong. Low bias. And yeah, low bias because decision tree is high bias because it kind of forces you down a path. Um, with the random forest, because you have all the trees and they're voting, that that enables you to get a little more flexibility. So I, that that's my understanding anyway. I, hopefully, that's and then right. like a linear model is like high bias, but it, yes. it but it doesn't yes. have its it won't fit the data as well because right. it, it's right. Kind of, so that's why the the R squareds are lower, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, I understand. Woo. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is what uh, uh, shows the, the difference. Because I've left uh, the, the day, day, the book um, outcome of day samples and mine, uh, it's uh, the result of this. And as you can see, um, the, the result is slightly different, for example, for basic um, linear models uh, with their with seeds, they obtain like uh, 80, no point 80, 80, 88, 7, and while I found no point eighty four. So let's say eighty nine percent, and I find I found eighty five. It um, you know it's it's a um, little difference, but then it, it will show di this different resampling, uh, more, a larger difference if we go forward. And um, to do this, they they said I don't know if I'm saying the things correctly. If you understand the way I, <laughs> I said it, because I, I said it in Italian, <laughs> just using <laughs> uh, uh, a, a sort of English. So 
uh, it, I, I collect uh, metrics of the four models and then uh, um, it does a bit of uh, like manipulation. Yeah. And you see that this is the, the, the table. So we have all the folds, so all the uh, R squared result for all the folds for random forests, basic uh, interacting splines. Then they uh, have calculated the correlation. Where is it? There. Mm -hmm. And so there is um, a little difference uh, uh, within the correlation, which is might be not very important. Um, they've made this uh, visualization for you to see that uh, there are differences. Have you have you seen this uh, this this graph? So what what are we what are what are we looking at with this graph? Yeah. So inside we have uh, the workflow That's, ID. Yeah, which is the what type of model it is yeah why why is the it's like a combination of models <clears throat> each line yeah. is a id so that's the the fold why does it go up oh maybe this one. Oh, i'm i'm sorry if i'm uh Oh, it's the correlation is what you're yeah. looking at. Okay, I see. Correlation. Da, 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 da. Oh, just between the different, between the different models. Mm -hmm. Why do why do they all go up? Well, shouldn't they be random? Are there interactions between folds? There shouldn't be, right? Craziness. Oh, they've been. They were, sorted. A... They, were, they were sorted. <laughs> they were sorted. They were sorted in that by... order. Yeah, yeah Frederick, if you mutate... don't mind, could you scroll so we could see the whole plot there? Yeah. So, yeah, it's just, I, I just wanted to kind of absorb it. Okay, so there's the models. And you, you see the, the mutate line there. They're reordering the workflow ID by the estimate. That's why they go up. Right. They should be random. So they'd probably, it would be a messy plot. Yeah, so they just do this so you can see what's going on, I guess. Sorts yeah, of. but I almost thought it was like machine learning, where like as you do iterations, they get better as yeah. the parameters are tuned or something like that. Yeah. So basically, that's not this, what this is showing. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. This is, this is this is the 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 estimates, and we see uh, here is this. Oh, it's uh, the R squared is the estimate. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was confused. I was confused about that correlation. Sorry. Yeah, I just I no no, no it's uh, not it's not the the R squared. This is the, the estimate. So if we because, scroll back down. Because, yes, it's the uh yes, the, this is the metric. So if yeah. I yeah, so the metric is R square and this is the the estimate of the R square. Yes, of course, yes. And so for each fold. So that's uh, so there the we get, Yeah, we get the sense of how they compare relative to each other. Yeah, I see. Okay. I I'm I'm understanding now what, what this is telling us. Yeah. And so the splines well, and, looks like that performs a little better and then the random force for sure get higher estimates so yeah mm -mm. with some variation mm -mm. between folds yeah that's interesting um because uh, this is uh this is the the resampling thing results mm -hmm. so things changes a lot when you when you do resampling that's why they right. they they want to find uh, um something that is an average uh estimate mm -hmm. 
because then you can trust your predictions when, when you have new data. Um, so then what, uh, okay. So here, for example, so as I said to Brandon, I did uh, um, my uh, uh, split with a certain seed, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I didn't follow them. Uh, and I uh, have different results. So like my estimate is uh, 89 and they have 99. So which is quite a difference it as is. well as the confidence. Hmm. The, the, yeah. Mine's 99, but it's a different 99. <laughs> so I've been trying to run it in the background too. But I, I, I think I didn't copy and paste uh, my seed, so I don't know what seed it started with, because um, it earlier I had an error that said there is no function called et dot seed. I forgot the s. Uh, set 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 seed. Yeah, I only had et seed. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what 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 uh, what random number generator I start with. So is there a get seed? Maybe I can figure that out. No. Um, that would be nice, yeah, if you knew what the last seed you had was. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So uh, I I use it one, two, three for my split, and this this made this um, little difference. But anyway. Uh, then the book says, let's go back to here. We have seen this thing. Okay. Now they said, what, just because there is a quite of variation. So we might want to analyze the variance. So how they, they, they variate. So they, they said, if I do, the difference within uh, of the variance. This includes the cover, uh, the cover eight. So I, I need to, if there's a, sin, a significant positive covariance, then any statistical test of this difference will be critically underpowered. So when it's compared with the difference in, two models. So if, if we ignore the uh, resample to resample e effect, that will be bias in our model comparison towards finding no differences within models. So there is, um, mm, uh, bias that is uh, created with resampling um, because of this resample to resample effect. And this is not what you were saying because you were talking about different bias within different type of models. Yes. Here, here we are talking of bias within resample to resample. So this is the covariance between samples? Is that? Sorry, I when uh, when I see mathematical statistical equations like this, my mind blanks out. <laughs> <clears throat> it goes to sleep, which is why I haven't advanced in uh, in my statistical career very far. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anytime there's a sigma, just forget it. Okay, uh, let, let's say that we consider the variance. Yeah. So when you when you run this code just below, I can I can see you. But anyway, they uh, they put this to like just to give to to give the sense that there are, there are two different variables. 
I'm, I'm out. Hello? No, you, you froze and we can kind of still hear you, but yeah, maybe it's your internet again. Oh, no. So, so do 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 one of you all understand the the covariate thing a little more? Could could you explain <laughs> it? Maybe I, I I'm not sure I get it. Um, is it the co? It's the variation of the models between resamples of the model. Like I'm I'm not sure I understand that. Not sure. I have to dig into my old notes yeah I'd have to get, i would have to mull on that one a little myself i will confess hello are you back i'm back there she is all right so sorry about that i had to change my connection to switch to, into my mobile oh. Oh, sometimes no. it does i don't know sometimes it's happened yeah Anyway, mm. let's go back to black. Uh, OK, so I was saying that they mentioned this X and Y just to, to give a, you a sense of uh, <laughs> cal calculating a variance within two variables. And they, they can be, you know, in, in this um when when you make a comparison between two two variables and the interaction you know the statistic is very fun sometimes i, I really like it as well as, as the math for example because it gives you an idea of what 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 is happening and so, and the, the covariance is the interaction within the variance of the two variables. Because it, the, the covariance is like sigma, so the standard deviation of one variable multiplied for the standard deviation of the other variables, and then divided by something else. For example, if we, if we, we see here. Hmm. Okay. Italian. <laughs> Probabilita. Probabilita. Okay. So, for example, let, let's let's search for for a, a a simple formulation. The Maybe the graph at the top. There were some graphs, some pictures, like there, the little bubbles. Okay. To the right, yeah. So the correlation between x and y, if it's a circle, a scatter plot between the variances. Mm -hmm. So if it's a circle, there's no correlation. If it's like that, it's anti-correlated, and if it's like that, it's positively correlated. Mm -hmm. So that's if two variables are varying the same way together. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Kind of their tendency to behave Oops. the same way. Yeah. Versus being completely independent. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, you are analyzing the uh, deviation. So the, the, the variation, the, the deviation of the variables, mm -hmm. if they it's uh, the variation is linear within each other. But there was a, a nice um, formulation with sigma. Like here, I'm, I'm doing the same variable. So the, the covariance is, is equal to itself, to, to the variance. But when I, I do with two different variables, where is it? Okay. 
Ah, sì, ah, sì, sì va, ok, vai. Can put the other on the other side. But anyway, so um, let, let, let's look at this one here. So if I uh, put this on this side, I can see it here, maybe. So it's the standard deviation of the two uh, divided by uh, the multiplication of the two standard deviations. So it's basically uh, lets you lets you understand what is the, uh, the the missing part of the difference within the variance of the two variables. Just as the same when you calculate the residuals, you know you take a, a bit off because the, the um, well, anyway. So uh, the, this is to to say that the, the it's very important to understand how the the, the, uh, the in in this case the matrix um, changes within different models. And uh, they said that to analyze this, there is a very simple um, model comparison, which is ANOVA analysis. And they use ANOVA uh, making a linear model of the R squared of the different um, models, which is turns out to be very interesting. You know, you know ANOVA, which is the analysis of variance, with ANOVA, I, I, analysis the, analysis, I do analysis of the variance. In this case, they do, you see, ANOVA is like a linear model and where, where beta zero is the estimate of the mean of our square statistic. Beta one is the change in mean um, R square between the, 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 the other. So like one is within the basic linear model. The other is the interaction, the difference within the basic linear model and the random forest. The other one in our case. So we do, we do this uh, building up a vector and we name it this as a difference and we do uh, um, this as the difference between the spline model and the basic model. You see this here? Where is it? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, for example, I do this and, and you see that uh, there is a, a new vector difference. And this is the difference between spline and basic. And now I'm going to apply a linear model so on this um, on this vector here. And what I do is just making a model with one. And that what means, what, it, what is the, the meaning of this? But basically, if, if I do this, um, because I sometimes make confusion with when I have one, or when I have zero or, or minus one, there are all tricks that um, you use inside a model for um, checking different results no? within the model. So in this case, what I obtain is the average. So if I do this, I obtain the, the, the average of my, um, different vector. In fact, if I do this mean difference, 
I have the same result. And then um, you can see this here. For example, I do this model and then tidy the model. I have the estimate, the standard error, and the statistic. I can calculate this like with the mean. I obtain the estimate with the standard deviation. Um, I calculate the standard deviation and then the standard error. And then the, the T statistic as the um, um, if I divide the, um, the estimate with the standard error, I obtain the DT statistic. If I run all this thing together, okay, this is, is um, the same result as this. This is the mean. This is the no, this is the um, standard deviation. It, I use it for calculating uh, the standard error, and then here is the t statistic. And then you can calculate the p value. Do you know how to calculate the p value? You have to look it up in a table. The yeah, I forget what it is. Z Z or something. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Um, that looks pretty significant, I suppose. Just a little bit. There's a so what, is, low, what does that um, What does that tell you exactly? It tells you that the difference between your models is significant, which is what we saw early on with that plot where we had the random forest model at 0.85 and the rest right. kind of down at 0 0.80 or something. Mm. Is that is that what it's telling us? It's like the same information? Uh, yeah, a different way of looking at it, I suppose. Yeah. Because this is, um, what, what we did is the difference within uh, uh, the spline and the basic model. We did um, a vector with a difference of this difference of these two. So I did like uh, no point eight minus uh, no point eight one seven to have this difference, and these are, as we said uh, before, the estimate of the R squared for each fold. So this difference, uh, with this difference, I've made a linear model and uh, the p-value is basically, let, says that, uh, mm, if I, is the probability for to, to find a value which is greater or uh, which is as the same or even more extreme than uh, um, than my value. So it's very low. So I think that this is the 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 this. In this case, I would. Uh, um say that my hypothesis or my new hypothesis is true because it's lower than uh, my uh, cutoff which is five percent uh, so, no much lower no so i, I always make so i say that uh, if the probability is zero 
close to zero, very close to zero. So it's very difficult for me to find something similar or even more extreme than this. Right? Yeah, unlikely to be due to random chance. Yeah. Okay. So when I have uh, this p value, which is lower than uh, 5%, I do um, uh, uh, reject the new hypothesis. Right? Because, yeah. Yeah, which is that they're that they're same, right? The models are the same. That's the null yeah, hypothesis, the, and then the we're rejecting it because the p-value is well well below the cutoff of magic cutoff of 0.05. Okay, so in this in this case in this condition, I would uh, um, um, say that. Uh, mm, the result here. Okay, so it doesn't say that because um, it basically selected uh, uh, the estimate, the p value, which is this, and says that um, the p value indicates a statistically significant signal because it's lower than 0.5, no point, no 0.05, so 5%. So the collection of spline terms for longitude and latitude do appear to have an effect. <coughs> so they have an effect. And then, uh, so we decide that uh, we need to understand a bit more because, uh, okay, here, for example, the, they, with their uh, seeds, with their uh, with they samples, they found uh, an square estimate of uh, 0.91, okay? And um, the practical size effect of 2%. Instead, for a little change here, what I found is slightly different. different. OK, this is my result. So I found uh, no point, no three as the estimate. Instead, they found no point, no, no nine. So like close to one and I am, it's very different. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're much, you're three times higher. Yeah. So this is four, zero, three, zero. So quite different. Uh, let's see, mine mine is more similar to yours at 0 0.008. Yeah. So they're just wrong. So in, 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 more, more investigation is needed, basically. It's the best ending to every scientific paper ever. <laughs> More investigation is needed. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then they do they Good old R stand arm. This uh, uh, to um, to look at and So now we're doing some Bayesian of the same, the same sort of thing, but Bayesian approach. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we're um, resampling our resampling. 
It's turtles all the way down. It is. <laughs> Just keep resampling. Okay, so uh, this this part uh, just we can uh, maybe just have a look together a bit because um, um let let jump directly onto the code and see uh, they use this uh, uh, this this package and the perf mode function. So it takes our list of models, mm -hmm. or it's it's not a it's a. What is the four models? Four models is it is the list, or it's a table of models. Um, I'm scrolling up trying to find it. Where is four models? The, the four models. Uh, it's this one here is the workflow set. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, is this one here? So it's um, it's the list because it contains lists of all, of the four models that we did it. So perf mod. Oops. There it is. What's I did run it, but I don't see it. What is this? Refresh. Okay, path mod. Mm. Ah, um, because it's a new, it's on R. Um, I think I'm going to start from here. Okay, so I should have this package. Let's copy ah and tidy posterior as well. Live tidy posterior. Perf mod. And this. Perf mod is from tidy posterior, yeah. Maybe that's why I didn't load. Okay. So now we should perf mod. Okay, let's see. So it's a uh, Bayesian analysis of resampling statistics. Uh, so Bayesian analysis uses here to answer the question when looking at the sampling results, are the differences between models reals? Okay. So I use this uh, perf mod function with the models and a metric. I need to establish the metric. And then the prior intercept with our stand, stand arm. So I calculated the student, the t With one degree of freedom. Mm -mm. Let's have a look. It takes a minute. Your desk will be warmer in a few seconds. <laughs> Some iterations and everything. Let, let's uh, keep going here. So there is the resulting of it uh, uh, as information on resampling process as well as the stand object embedded within. So 
We are interested in the posterior distribution of the regression parameter, parameters. Let's grab this thing as well and see what's happened. So it's done. The result here are sampling for model continuous. So it shows all the iterations. Yeah. Yep. I got the same output. There's four chains. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there's uh, what tidy glimpse. There's tidy. There's ways to tidy up the model outputs. And then. Uh, warm up sampling total yeah and then you make a plot which very looks very similar to the one we had before with the auto plot mm -hmm. well there's a, there's two of them right there's a there's like the distribution of the r squares yeah yeah there is this um the result of this anova r square have been tidied and then uh, put inside model post. Yeah. So if I do tidy, if I do tidy, I have this uh, table, the model and the posterior. So I've calculated the, the posterior this way. This is the posterior calculation. What is the posterior an estimate of? Right, the posterior is this. Um, so it's the event that happened um, uh, to the prior before. Uh, so uh, the prior is so the posterior is um, uh, you know it rains because it's February. February is the prior and it rains is the posterior. So it rains because it's February. So it belongs to something else. What was our prior then? Prior is a probability of an event to happen. So and in, that, we set it to one? Prior, so we set the prior intercept to some student T output with a degrees of freedom of one? That's what we set the prior to, because when you do Bayesian, you have to you have to give it a prior, right? Or does it just make one up? No. Am we, I asking too have... many questions? <laughs> this is really beyond my. We my staff we, we training, have so. no yeah no I'm I'm just yeah, I'm trying to understand as well. We we have uh, given the prior because this mm -hmm. is the prior intercept, so we are calculating. It says um, uh, so this T student, what this does is um, yeah, I was going to run that. T distribution, degrees of freedom of one, location zero, scale null, all the scale false. It's a p value. it's it's a probability, yeah. In this case, an intercept because we, we. Oh, wait. So, yeah. So, the assumption is that the distribution of the output data is the T distribution. Mm -hmm. Is that right? It's the point to start. So, you start from there and then things change. Hot damn. I think I get it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, so here you have the distributions, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we can. Uh, uh, it's it's still a lot. No, uh, 
not very much we left um you want to carry on do do, have, do folks have time we're almost at the bottom or you want to do See, it for next time no no we we have uh, it's it's almost uh, the, the end of the chapter so it does the same the same plot it, re it replicates the same plot with the new assumptions because we do the auto plot with the anova mm -hmm. this time and this is just uh, uh, an adjustment for the visualization um, for the text. So, and, and again, the random forest is the one with the highest R square. Yeah. Even under these conditions. So, my, in uh, my ANOVA, is the difference between the linear model and the spline, isn't it? We did that. Right, the, the different, we computed the difference between those two models and then computed the statistics on those. On those ones. Just those okay. two. Then we use the four models. Yeah, and that was the ANOVA? Mm-hmm, R square ANOVA. The, 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 the first time we use ANOVA, we use it for uh, the difference within these two. And then again, we did this. Uh, so we can see call it ANOVA again. But anyway, you need to have a look at these things a bit to just to know. So again, uh, contrast models, this is another function, a new one contrast models uh, with the R square ANOVA model that we have just done it, splines and basic, the two of the difference. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the uh, distribution of the posterior for the mean difference. So starting from a certain point, then the distribution of the posteriors is this one here, spline plus interaction minus basic. The, the posterior shows that the center of the distribution is greater than zero. That's that red plot? The yeah. Pink, or pink. Yeah, it's the orange or something. And then they're saying that that means that the values from the splines are higher than the other one? Mm hmm Okay. Was in cre uh, credible intervals. And then uh, start with uh, Pract, and they mm -hmm. have uh, uh, extrapolated uh, what? Select some, uh, let, let's see. I can do that. And... Okay, so this is contrast models. In contrast models is estimate the difference between models. Contrast models function. So I have this uh, R square ANOVA, which is the Bayesian analysis resampling result. And then the list of the, the models. Again, set a certain seed. And um, let's see this summary. Not here. 
Ah, I didn't name it. I didn't save the the function with a name. Okay. So. See, Frederica, that's a. As I say, that's a typo from the book. Uh, you had it named properly. It's R S Q above, and then it's R Q S. It's just a, a mistype. Uh, in fact. Yeah, in fact, in fact, yes. Okay. Um, so the probability col uh, uh, column reflects the proportion of the posterior that is greater than zero. And this is the probability that the positive difference is real. So the value is not close to zero this time, because previously was close to zero, providing a strong case for statistical significance. So, okay. So the estimate main difference is fairly close to zero, however, and this is what we uh, found. So in Bayesian analysis, this is a rope estimate, region of practical equivalence from Roskoll and Lido to estimate this size option to the summary function. This function is used. Pract equiv. So it's practically a, a pract um, Equive is the column is the proportion of the posterior that is within um, min minus size and size. So if it's one, the proportion is one, so it's, it's complete. So it, it's equivalent, I think. And then finally, the last uh, autoplot. Okay. It's type rope. Okay, so this is a visualization for um for these things here. So random forest is the, the one with the practical or uh, probability of practical equivalence, which is higher. So more resample increases the precision of over overall resample estimates. So this way uh, I use geom path and the ribbon and I obtain this visualization to uh, to see uh, to the random forest model the mean difference in r square so not not very so it's quite uh linear quite stable around a certain value 50? Uh, well maybe 60. yeah this is uh, uh around Zero is here, so it's uh, uh, slightly below zero. The mean difference in a square. Okay, so we had a look at this chapter, a bit of <laughs> experimenting thing. Thank you so much for for going through it. I really appreciate it. Okay, so uh, thank you for coming and see you next week for, I don't know, maybe someone else will, uh, maybe Ryan, eh? would you like to do the next chapter? Why not? 
let me let me give it a shot. I apologize for my <laughs> delay today. Uh, I have a meeting That's at eight thirty biweekly, so um, yes, next week I should be available, and I would be more than happy to uh, present. Right, great. Okay, so next next week uh, it's Ryan uh, doing chapter twelve. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.